So in this last lecture, I'd like to explain a bit about those sum of squares equations that you might actually see in ANOVA, but I find it helpful for understanding what's going on with regression as well. Uh, they actually exist and are well defined for regression. And so let's get a little bit of intuition for them. I've got an equation, I've got the equations here. Um, sum of squares total, you just take the uh, observation minus the mean and square it for each observation and then just add them up. Uh, it's kind of like taking the variance except for you don't take the average deviation. And so if you want to think about it graphically, come on over here. Remember I, I had uh, all of those points graphed here. Remember that the dotted line indicates where the mean of y is. And so if we take a look here, these red vertical lines are the heights of the things that were being squared in this sum. And so we take this difference, we square it. We add it to this difference squared, plus that difference squared, plus that difference squared. Um, so then, let me go ahead and introduce you to another sum of squares. See, these are just sums of squared differences of sorts. Um, we can go ahead and, and think about the sum of squared errors. Now, why would it be called the sum of squared errors? Well, here's the observation. It's the actual response variable. It's the value of the response variable. And here's the predicted value given by our regression equation. So it's the error that we make. And so if we go, back, go ahead back here, we see that I've drawn the regression line in here. Um, and these blue vertical lines indicate the distance, the vertical distance, from the observation to the regression line. And so these are the, the, the numbers that we're going to square and add up. So we take the distance of the blue vertical line, square it, the vertical distance from this observation and the regression line, that blue vertical line again, and square it, add it to this squared, and add it to that squared, and that will be our sum of squared errors. Now here's something to think about. Is it possible for the sum of squared errors to be bigger than the sum of squared total. Well, it turns out that that is not possible at all, because if you remember back to the first video on, on regression basics, we found this regression line by minimizing the sum of squared errors. And so we know that we're able to sort of explain away, and that's kind of our goal with regression, is to explain away this sum of squared total. So the smaller the sum of squared errors is, the better job that we've done in explaining the variability in our response variable. And so here is our sum of squared errors, and so what does that mean when that's small? Well, one, one measure for that is we can take the sum of squared total minus the sum of squared errors and just standardize that by how much we actually had to explain in the first place, the sum of squared total. Uh, this actually has a very uh, useful name. This is r squared. This is the proportion of variability that we explained, sum of squared total, minus the sum of squared error. That's how much better this sum of squares is than this one, how much better the tilted regression line is than just saying that we uh, guess that it's the mean of y over the sum of squared total to standardize it. This is a number between 0 and 1, and we name this uh, so that we understand precisely what it is. This is r squared. Remember the correlation coefficient from the previous video. The correlation coefficient in the previous video had this really hairy formula, um, and it turned out to give us the the strength of the association, as well as uh, which direction the association is. Turns out if you square it, it tells you the proportion of the variability that we explained in the response variable. Remember, this is the variability in the response variable to be explained. It's the proportion that we explained just exploiting the linear relationship between x and y.